Dance and music. Oh, wow. Big names. Big songs. Big guests. Big prizes. Well, it's a big show. The Big Show. Put your hands together for the one and only... Glenn, Angel, FD, and Sean. That's what I'm talking about. 1FM 91.3. Good times, greatest hits. Good morning, Singapore. Good morning, world. Welcome to The Big Show and The Big Show TV. Every Wednesday, we have a very special guest on the show. And this week's special guest is the CEO of Robert Parker Wine Advocate, uh, Nicola Ashad. Good morning, Nicola. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, wine, always a great topic to talk about <laughs> yes. for yes. us at any time of the day. Especially at 8 o'clock. Yes, <laughs> perfect time. <laughs> and I just want to add that uh, following the 100% acquisition by the Michelin Group in 2019, uh, Nicola is also concurrently acting as the Managing Director for the Michelin Guide in Southeast Asia, South Korea and Japan. Now, the Robert Parker Wine Advocate has recently been awarded 24 wineries with the Robert Parker Green and which Nicola will be telling us uh, more about, and also launched organic and biodynamic wine search filters on its website. Wow, nice. you guys are doing so much. Now, uh, Nicola, welcome to the show once again. Um, Glenn just mentioned something about the Robert Parker Green Emblem. Uh, what exactly is the criteria that's used uh, to assess the wineries that get awarded with it? And can you tell us a little bit more about the emblem itself? Sure, sure. So thank you for, for, for receiving me this morning. So uh, effectively, for the moment, uh, it came, in fact, from the fact that we, we saw that the consumer is more and more sensitive of uh, sustainable practice in terms of farming and also what they are consuming. So we, uh, the first thing, we added filters so that our consumers, our subscribers, our audience can see if a wine is certified organic or biodynamic. And beyond organic or biodynamic, we wanted also to go to promote uh, winemakers who are doing extraordinary efforts in terms of sustainable uh, practices in winemaking. So I would say it's beyond organic certification. I mean, some of them can be certified, some of them not. But really, these 24 wineries in nine countries are uh, the pioneers of sustainability in the in the wine world. They are ambassadors and they have shown extraordinary efforts. Okay, uh, you mentioned nine countries. Which are the nine countries that, uh, could you tell us more about that? Sure, sure. So we have effectively, uh, sorry, we don't have yet uh, in Asia, but uh, maybe uh, in, in China, I guess, uh, in the next few years. But we have Australia, Austria, France, Germany, Italy, New Zealand, South Africa, Spain, and USA. Okay. Wow. Okay, when we come back, I need to find out uh, how sustainability and organic and biodynamic all yeah. come into wines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because that, that's all very, very new to me. All right. Meantime, here's Starship. Nothing's going to stop us now on The Big Show, 1FM 91.3. We are speaking to Nicola Asha, the CEO of Robert Parker Wine Advocate on The Big Show TV. Sorry, I said Asha. 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 <laughs> Nicola, you mentioned three words just now, and I'm going to try and put this together in a question. How is sustainability different from organic or uh, and biodynamic in, in the context of wine production? I guess sustainability is a general, generic term that englobes, that includes organic and biodynamic. Mm. Organic refers, in fact, to the set of regulated uh, farming principles. Uh, most of the time, I would say it precludes uh, the use of, of chemicals like uh, synthetic fertilizers, pesticides, herbicides, and so on. And uh, biodynamic uh, is also building on uh, a set of uh, organic uh, principles and also with uh, more, I would say, um, a philosophically minded principle. They follow uh, the stars, the uh, the uh, the impact of the moon on the harvest, and so on. Whereas sustainability, whereas sustainability is very generic, and can include uh, any impact on the on the on the environment. How many how many uh, uh, wineries these days are actually using the organic system? 
For instance, uh, Robert Parker, when advocate, we review uh, every year 30,000 wine. And, oh. uh, and, and, and uh, in our database, we identified already 2,000 uh, wines, organic or biodynamic. Wow. Okay, Nicola, just to sidetrack a little bit, you mentioned something about the stars and the, the moon. moon. Can you tell us a little bit more about that when it comes to uh, biodynamic? So that is, is a biodynamic. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it has been created by a, a philosopher called uh, Rudolf Steiner, and in fact, he was building on the organic uh, farming principles, but he, he went a little beyond with also some philosophically uh, based guidelines, and, uh, and 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 he has studied the impact of the of the moon and the sky on effectively all the cycle. Uh, of the harvest, when to harvest, when to plant, uh, and so on. So it's a little, uh, a, a little more esoteric. Some people like it, some people don't like it. But you can see that a, a lot of uh, very famous wineries have adopted either organic or biodynamic. Wow. wow. Okay, I never knew that. <laughs> we gotta ask you that on the radio again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, because so, yeah. because right now we we may have an exclusive audience just watching us right now. And then we're gonna go back on the radio, and uh, yeah. you know, just so that they don't lose out. I think that's a very that's important a very interesting question. point because yeah. I've yeah. seen biodynamic before, and I've no, I I really just thought it was more. Uh, organic and sustainable than involving astrology and all that. Yeah, you know? yeah. No, because I think a lot of people are familiar, right? You say organic wines. Yeah. But biodynamic, I think everyone's asking like, what? what, what is, is biodynamic wine? <laughs> they'll, they'll serve it at the table and they'll be like, this is biodynamic wine, but they don't know where it comes from. <laughs> I guess it's more, it's it's organic to, uh, I would say, to synthesize, it's organic plus uh, some uh, philosophical mindset behind, but for sure, they are, they are treating the wine almost as a as a living body, I would say. Oh wow! So yeah. biodynamic is always organic. It's building on organic uh, principles, so okay. it's, it's very similar in terms of uh, in terms of uh, farming principles. Okay. Okay. Mm. Wow, that is that is something I I never even thought of when it comes to wine. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, when you think of wine, you just drink it. I just <laughs> drink it, right? It tastes good. I drink it. Yeah. <laughs> So, Nicola, um, when it comes to sustainability uh, practices, what are some of the best ones that reviewers have seen? So, and uh, first of all, uh, going organic is a long process. Mm. On average, it takes three years. Three it years. takes three years. So, you have to imagine the the effort for the winemakers. Uh, they cannot put uh, uh, synthetic fertilizer, pesticides, chemicals. So, uh, they they can be. Uh, there can be an uh, incidence of, of pests, of mildew, so it's very stressful. Uh, the costs uh, sometimes also uh, increase, because I would say when they use horses in, instead of tractors, it can be, uh, it can be more expensive. So it's really an effort. And after, you have a lot of uh, different practices. For instance, you can uh, put uh, vegetation around vineyards or between, uh, between the plots in vineyards, so that I would say you have bees of all the ecosystem uh, coming back to the vineyards. Of course, no use of, of, uh, of chemicals, uh, use of horses. You have also renewable energy. Uh, we have seen a tremendous effort to use either solar power, but also geothermal energy. Also manual harvesting, packaging. More and more wineries uh, try to adapt lightweight bottles, because when you export your bottles, lightweight bottles will, will, uh, will reduce the carbon footprint. And last but not least, of course, all the cycle of, uh, of, of, of water usage, recycling the water of the winery, filtering it, and using it, using it again. Mm -hmm. So you can see that all the practices are very global. They go from farming to mechanics to packaging to, uh, to water. And, 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 and so it's really a, and, uh, a conversion takes roughly uh, three years. Mm. Yeah, they got the flush the flush the ground out as well, right? From all the chemicals, if there were any before. Yeah. But what is good is that, uh, the, 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 and what we wanted to promote at Robert Parker is that first of all, it's good for the environment, mm. it's good for the soil, it's good for the ecosystem, and second, it's good for the consumer. Because for the pandemic uh, now, more and more consumers are very sensitive to the environment, to the protection of our planet, of our soil. But also, they are more and more sensitive to what they drink, what is inside, are they pesticide, uh, are chemical uh, have been used or not, and uh, because consumers are more and more sensitive about their health. I don't, I cannot say that you are healthy drinking wine, <laughs> or the, but at, at least 
all the consumers, even when it relates to wine, are more and more sensitive about what they drink. And at Robert Parker, we wanted to reconcile both worlds. I mean, providing recommendation on the wines that are the best in terms of quality of tasting, and also winemakers who respect the environment and who are leaders in, uh, in sustainability. Because most often, and also in Singapore, most of the time, I hear people saying, yeah, but organic wines don't taste good and so on. Mm-hmm. So a lot of things behind that. Effectively, you can have wines that are not good because it, it happens. That, but at Robert Parker, our role was to reconcile both worlds, to promote the best quality wine, the best tasting wine, and at the same time, promote the wine who, uh, who are leaders in terms of, uh, of sustainability winemaking. Interesting, Nicola. Uh, you mentioned the pandemic. The pandemic has affected so many industries. Has it affected the, the winemakers? Sure. Uh, 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 of course, it affected the, the winemakers. Uh, the winemakers have uh, had difficulties. Nobody could travel. So mm. they have, of course, uh, in terms of selling with their wine, uh, uh, retail has boomed and has exploded all over the world. They are also sending their samples in tubes so that uh, 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 consumers and critics all over the world can taste their wines. And more and more also, they have become uh, sensitive also to uh, sustainability. Mm. The pandemic has made us all realize that uh, our planet is at risk, environment is key, and also uh, in terms, again, of consumers, hygiene and health Uh, people are more and more sensitive to health. Mm. Okay. Mm. All right. Hold on. We're going back on the radio, okay? Dr. Alban, it's my life right here on The Big Show and The Big Show TV. Our guest for this morning is Nicola Ashad, the CEO of Robert Parker Wine Advocate. Uh, now, I mentioned earlier on that uh, uh, they have acquired uh, the, they have been acquired by the Michelin Group uh, 100% in 2019 and uh, Nicola is concurrently acting as the Managing Director for the Michelin Guide in Southeast Asia, South Korea and Japan. Once again, we welcome you to the show. Uh, Nicola, thank you very much for being with us you know uh, we were just talking about uh, the difference between uh, organic and biodynamic could you tell us uh, once again the difference between the two so uh, organic wine uh, relates to a set of farming uh, principles that most of the time preclude uh, the use of, of, of chemicals and and uh, are regulated by third party bodies uh, regarding how uh, to farm uh, uh, a vineyard according to, to this principle. And biodynamic is, is going a little further. It's building on organic pr- principle. So it's most of the time the same set of farming principle, but also it has been developed by a philosopher, Rudolf Steiner, who in fact believes also in the influence of the star, the moon, on the cycle of harvest and how you could use natural compost uh, to uh, so it's more how the, the human can live in harmony with uh, with uh, with the nature. Right. If you're listening and you're going like, what? <laughs> wow. That's exactly how we reacted as well when we asked uh, Nicola that uh, on the Big Show TV. Yeah. I had no idea that biodynamic involved like astrology and 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 when when uh, the the wines was were harvested or the grapes were harvested to make the wine. Um, Nicola, you're talking about organic uh, wines. What does it take for a winery to go organic? Like how many years and what do, what's the process that they have to go through? So it's a process that takes years. Exactly as you said, it takes uh, on average up to three years. And uh, depending on, on each country, because you have uh, uh, certified bodies uh, in each country, so the regulation can be slightly different by country. But, uh, but generally, uh, they have to go through a set of audits and a set of, of controls uh, during these three years where, uh, where auditors will effectively check uh, if they use uh, chemicals or not, uh, if they, how they recycle their, uh, their water, how they use uh, packaging, and so on and so forth. So they will really look at the carbon footprint of all their winery. Well, and, and FD, your question was a good one. Uh, you know, have the um, you know the winemakers been affected by the pandemic? By the pandemic, yeah. yeah. Because I mean, for us consumers, right? I know I'm drinking more than ever now. <laughs> yeah. During the pandemic, you know. So, yeah. have the winemakers been affected um, badly? Oh, or well, uh, uh, in 2020, uh, you saw, in fact, all over the world, uh, the restaurant being closed, and in in some countries, uh, half of the consumption of wine is done in restaurants. 
Mm. Yeah. So, uh, so winemakers uh, had a lot of uh, cash issues because when you have 50% of your sales uh, disappearing by uh, in one day, so of course the, the sales of, uh, of of consumers increased, but most of the time not enough to cover what was consumed in the restaurant. Mm. Ah. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so effectively, and when you have you know your distribution channel completely changing, so effectively. There was more wine sold on e-retail, on internet, and direct to consumer. Uh, the channel of, of, of uh, what we call Oreca, so all the restaurants, hotels disappearing uh, into the mm. and uh, so for, for some one reason it, it has been uh, it has been quite tough. Right. One last question before we play a song, uh, you know, on on one FM ninety one point three, and go back to the Big Show TV. Uh, tell us about the misconception about organic and sustainable wines. So the, the biggest misconception, especially in Singapore, uh, is that uh, organic wine or sustainable uh, wine don't taste good. Uh, effectively, you have a lot of, uh, of organic wines. But again, uh, look at the 24 wineries, look at Robert Parker. Our goal was to promote wineries who make amazing wine and at the same time who uh, are following sustainable practices. So the, what we wanted to reconcile both worlds and to prove our consumer that you can make amazing wine that are uh, 100 points and uh, and having uh, sustainable practices. Mm -hmm. And you will see in the, in the 24 uh, in the 24 uh, wineries, I will quote only one. You have this amazing Burgundy uh, winery called Le Roi. Le Roi is one of the most expensive and 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 and, and looked after uh, wine in the world. Also in Singapore, you can find them in, in, in Singapore. And in fact. Uh, the winemaker is a genius woman, and she developed uh, organic and, and, and biodynamic already 40 years ago. And all the critics worldwide acknowledge her, her wines are, are, are amazing. So and so and again, the 24 wineries you can find all of them in Singapore. They have distributors, so try them. And the best, as you said, the best way is to drink and taste. <laughs> you see if you like. You know, Nicola, I think this is the first time in my life that at 8.19, I feel like having a having glass, glass of wine. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Everybody loves wine. And that's why we have uh, Nicola Ashad, the CEO of Robert Parker Wine Advocate with us this morning. We continue to talk to uh, Nicola on The Big Show TV while we take a listen to Gautier featuring Kimbra on The Big Show 1FM 91.3. This is Somebody That I Used To Know. Good morning, Singapore. You know, Nicola, I, I'm not a huge wine drinker. I mean, I do in, enjoy my wine, but I, I don't drink a lot of it. And and the whole con that, that misconception of orga organic wine doesn't taste as good doesn't sit with me because you have less chemicals, you have you have less foreign uh, <laughs> input into a vineyard. Yeah. So your 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 wine is purer. How can it not mm. taste as good? That's why. Uh, that's why the, the, the best the best winemaker uh, managed to effectively have wines that are pure, that are, are, are more fine. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there are some uh, processes when it's uh, it's also uh, some intervention of the. You know, I mean, it's it's also a, a, a product that is made by the, by the men, and and if and, and there are some processes where at least you need some you need some intervention. Mm. So so uh, and, and you have. Uh, you, you can taste also uh, uh, some wines don't age well. Uh, mm. a, f a few of them, and they are also quite inconsistent. Mm. Uh, that's why, uh, again, what what we wanted to promote is that Robert Parker is, you know, is we are on the top uh, on the top wine, mm. and we wanted at least to uh, to show that. Uh, Top wine can also be uh, organic. Organic, yeah. Do you see the future of wines going down the organic and sustainable route for uh, more wineries? It's definitely a trend. It's definitely a trend. Uh, Thirty years ago, there was only a few of them. They were already uh, pioneer believers. Uh, now we see uh, all over the world. We see it, and and why we see it because it's 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 um, it's uh, it's a demand from the consumer. Mm -hmm. the con wants to know what they drink, what is inside the bottle, what has been the impact on the environment. Mm. So the consumer is driving the change. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, the 24 wineries that you guys awarded the uh, the green emblem to, so if I go to a, a, a wine shop, do I look out for these, um, uh, green, you know, emblems. these green emblems? Uh, so it's the first time. It's the first time we launch it. So uh, we'll see how the, uh, how the, the wineries will... We'll use it. 
uh, we have received amazing feedback by the 24 wineries. Uh, they told us they are, they are very proud of, of this recognition and they will uh, promote it. For the moment, it's, it's, uh, and I guess retailers might use it in the future. Uh, for the moment, I, I, for the moment, it's too soon. Mm. But for sure, I would encourage you for uh, to, 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 to try. Mm. Uh, I, I want to go and get bottles. Yeah, so uh, you know. yeah. anything where, anything available? Like, yeah. where do where, I go to find out which wineries? Yeah, mm. where can I get my my, my wine uh, from? <laughs> wine. Yeah. So, so first of all, uh, I encourage you to to check on on the on robertparker.com. This section of sustainability is free to read, so it's 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 free access. So you can you can see all the twenty four wineries and 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 know a little better uh, what is behind uh, this emblem. And after, uh, most of the uh, retailers uh, in Singapore, either offline or online, uh, will offer this, uh, this one with. And, I and, I, and you have these 24 one with, but don't stop at the 24. Again, we have reviewed more than 2,000 wineries who are organic or bionic, so lots of choice. Yeah, because I was under the impression I, if I go to a wine shop, right, see the I'll see the, uh, the green, green emblem yeah. on, on the bottles of wine. But yeah, this is no. something that just recently happened, right, mm. Nicola? Yes, in fact, soon. when you see retailers worldwide, sometimes they have a lot of stickers because uh, mm. so it, it can be also complicated to read because they can have the stickers for organic certification, for biodynamic certification. Uh, they can be certified by a country, a region, and so on. For, for the consumer also, it, it's complicated to read. For us, we were really, I mean, uh, with 24 wineries, we don't have the ambition to cover all. Mm just to cover a few of them and again uh, to reconcile the best of the quality and uh, and the best of sustainability Okay, so I'm on the Robert Par- Parker uh, website and I've gone to the sustainability uh, section and your whole list of your 24 wineries are here. So basically, if I walk into any wine shop here in Singapore and I pick a wine from any one of those 24 um, wineries, it's guaranteed to be organic. Definitely. Uh, we uh, So... Uh, some of them, uh, most of the of the 24 are certified organic and biodynamic, and they went beyond. And a few of them are not certified, but our editorial team wanted to uh, to 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 give them the recognition because they know that they also they have been beyond certification. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. So it's fairly easy. The website okay. is so easy to navigate. Yes, as long as uh, Angel is clear about it, because she is our minister <laughs> for sustainability <laughs> on the program. If it yes. passes, if it passes my yes. mark, it, it's it's good for you to drink. <laughs> yes, it's good for that's, the that's why we love her. You know, on the show, uh, Nicola. This is for people who are who are watching and listening to us now. Now who are perhaps not too well versed in wine uh, most of us think wine I need a wine chiller I have to keep it properly in our Asian climate uh, if I don't have a wine chiller what's the best way for me to keep my wine bottles well, I, I, effectively uh, uh, at least in a, in a place that is not too hot mm. that is uh, uh, normally we, we say that if, if a wine has been exposed to uh, a, a a few more days above uh, 30 or 35, it's, it's might, it might affect the wine. So, uh, so the best way is effectively to have a cooler uh, if you want to store the wine. And otherwise, I mean, Singapore is, is so well, uh, I would say, uh, stock in terms of wine. You can go to your wine shop uh, a few days before. Uh, before mm, uh, yeah. if, you, if you want to stock wine, it's better definitely to have a cooler. Yeah. But if, if not, I, I guess you just go and you rely on your on your uh, on your wine uh, wine cellar and on your on your on your um, on your shop close by and, yeah. and and they will advise you buy yeah. buy, that's it, exact- buy it when you need it yeah, yeah. that's exactly what i do yeah. sometimes i'll buy like a, an extra bottle and mm-hmm. i'll just put it in the fridge doesn't matter in yeah. the fridge is fine yeah yeah, yeah. Fridge, is fine. fridge is fine yeah Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much, Nicola. That was very, very eye-opening. Thanks for teaching us about the whole difference between organic and biodynamic, especially, and uh, revealing all those 24 wineries to us uh, today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Uh, no, Not Robert, Robert Nicola. Nicola. <laughs> From Robert Parker. <laughs> From Robert Parker. <laughs> Thanks, Nicola. Have Thank a great you. week. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> and we have Gerald with us as well. Where's Gerald? Gerald? Gerald is here, oh. but Gerald's oh, Ger- just face is not here. Gerald yeah. Chong. You're muted in case you can hear it's us. Okay, everybody get ready for Gerald Chong. I think... Um, the animator. Know, yeah. You know, I think that's one of the um, the, the best things about uh, this year's National Day theme song. Yeah. Uh, yes. If you watch the video, that yeah. is. The yeah. music video, the music you know. Video. So, it's the, so well done. Yeah, the animation is Morning, amazing. Hello. Morning, Gerald. You're muted. 
There you go. Now you're not Hi, Gerald. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, we are live already. Good morning. Yeah, we oh, are live. live. We are live <laughs> yes. on Facebook. Don't panic. Don't, don't panic. Don't panic. <laughs> we were just talking about how much uh, we love the animation <laughs> and the uh, music video for The Road Ahead. So good. So well done. Thank you very much. Really, Thank really Thank you. Nice, really yeah. glad to hear, to hear that. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's been a. It's I think been the a... reception has been really uh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. How long did it take you to yeah. to How many to man do hours? that? Uh, it was a period of about um, two to three months. Um, the live action side had to shoot um, quite early, mm. so that there was sufficient time for the animation. So it was tough on uh, the live action side as well. Mm. Uh, but then after like time, animation is a uh, is a laborious process. Um, so I think you can feel like kind of the passion and the time that went into every single frame. Yeah. Um, and the the result usually is quite sad. Uh, is 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 I think we're happy with the the, the result. Really, really well good. done. Yeah. yeah. So which came first, the live the live action yes. stuff came first, and then the animation was put in mm. after, right? And we yeah. also have yes. Jin Xiang or JX. See, I also can pronounce his name. <laughs> <Not bad. laughs> of course, uh, one Ong here, one Tio here. It's the two parts and the yeah. Van Kylen yeah. bro. We cannot say you Jin Xiang. I'm just going to go with bro. <laughs> yeah. bro. Bro bro, is what you're going to hear from us, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is, I, I think... Yeah. Um, Wait, we do want traffic. Hold on. Traffic. Oh, okay. traffic break. 1FM 91.3 traffic. Okay, you've got one or two delays across the expressways, that's for sure. Bit of heavy traffic on Dunnan Road towards the city after Hillcrest Road. Just stay within the speed limit, please. Have everyone buckled up. Be safe as you drive today. Good morning, Singapore. It's The Big Show with Glenn Angel, FD and Sean. And we have our two gentlemen uh, who are in, involved in this year's National Day theme song with us this morning. Uh, they are Huang... Huang Chin Xiang, who is the uh, music video director for The Road Ahead. Uh, he, of course, is from Chao Wei Films. And we have the animator for the music video, uh, who represents Finding Pictures, Gerald Chong, with us. Welcome, gentlemen. Hi. Hi. Thanks for having us. Good morning. Now, uh, uh, I'll speak to you first, Gerald, uh, because uh, we were talking to you a little bit earlier. Now, can you tell us, you said it took about three to four months to come up to complete the animation for the music video, The Road Ahead. But what was the inspiration behind the creative concept? Or should I be asking JX that? <laughs> I, I think from the, um, from the beginning, uh, the inspiration uh, really came from the mood and tone of the song. I think uh, Lin Ying, Evan, and uh, you know the singers really um, carried the right mood and tone. Um, so for 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 me la, um, there is a sense of like you know the, each time you hear the song, you start to get new emotions, um, and it very quickly grew on you. So like even after hearing like I think at least fifty or more times, uh, we never grew tired of the song. So I think there is a sense of. Um, variety as well you know you have four singers uh, each of blending their own individual voices to the song so i think uh, it was quite uh, <coughs> appropriate to have the uh, different animation styles come in and uh, represent their personalities and kind of the tones the tonal journey that the song brought us through right and of course, uh, we've just been joined by uh, Lin Ying. Good morning. Hi, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Talking about your song. So excited <laughs> about is. your song. You it know. is. Straight into it. <laughs> no, it's absolutely brilliant. I it think, is. I think um, you know, this song certainly has connected yes. with, with many, many people. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, every year we, we look forward to the National Day theme song you know and and uh, i think over the years we've had some really good um, uh, songs but i think um this song that you've composed in particular i think has a stronger connection mm. uh, with the people because everyone that i've spoken to you know even even our ministers for example yeah. mm. they love it you know yeah. uh, wow. it's it's that feeling you know the moment you listen to it you like it. It's I, one of those songs that will stick with you yeah. down the years. I when I first when I first heard it, I was thirty seconds into the song and I went, "This He's is done. a national day he, song." Yes, he approves. My words, he approves. My words were, "It's yeah. done." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I was playing it for them on on the NDP. Pe uh, ND Peeps uh, yeah. uh, Instagram. That was where I first uh, uh, watched yeah. it. You know, and the moment FD watched it he, he 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 heard you start singing at the start he was like yes that's it because for, for the past few years he's been going no no because <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you, no, 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 it's true it's true 
<laughs> I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. How I judge an NDP song. Oh, I'm so excited to hear. Okay, <laughs> it's very simple. If I do not get goosebumps in the first thirty seconds, the song doesn't work for me. Oh wow! That's why he has and to watch it in a cool had, room. I had. Goosebumps, <laughs> and he's very pale. It's very hard to yeah, see. Yeah, it's hard to see that. <laughs> <laughs> which brings me, which brings me to my great. question, uh, Lin Ying. Uh, yeah. Tell us the inspiration behind uh, the NDP uh, song yeah. for this year, "The Road Ahead." Um, actually, it's funny that you guys uh, bring up this. You know, listening to all these past songs because I. Um, I think like writing the song, I came from a point of like this is my first time participating in the NDP mm. and any sort of well done kind of involvement. <laughs> Thank you, but um, it was it was very daunting and you know my my work as a songwriter and singer is often just like representing my own emotions accurately. Like that's mm. all it really is about. As long as I speak for myself, honestly, that my job is done. You know, but with a with a task like this, you know, you're you're asked to speak for so many people, and that's a really difficult thing to assess. And um, I think, especially um, trying to write a song from uh, from a songwriter's perspective, it's like I needed to find a way to 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 write something that could really inspire people. So I guess I would say the inspiration behind it was was just. I wanted to channel my own feelings towards Singapore, hmm. mm. and because like I, I don't want to write songs about you know broad unity and solidarity and banding together, because you know there there are songs that already exist that have done that better than I have, and um, I think when I was asked to speak for our generation, I think the kind of feelings that uh, my generation has would uh, is a different kind of patriotism. You know, it's like it's about it's about the people more than more than the country as an abstract concept. Right. Mm. And um, I wanted to humanize that concept of like every, you know, this island is just made of every grain of sand and like even an anthem, something that, you know, we consider something very stately, something um, that's quite removed. It's actually just voices of our friends, you know, so right. I just really wanted people to remember that, you know, we're all human and we're... Wonderful. Just what a great yeah. answer. Yeah. My brilliant. goodness. Wonderful. 10 points you scored. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Brilliant. And, and, and for you to have uh, such an amazing team to mm. put it all together, mm. you know, yes. a, a great director like uh, uh, Chin yeah. Siang, and uh, oh of course, uh, the, the animation. We were just raving about mm -hmm. it as well. It, all, it has all come together Beautifully. So, yeah. so wonderfully well. All right. Uh, once again, we are speaking to Lin Ying, uh, the composer and singer for this year's NDP 21 theme song, The Road Ahead. Uh, we have have the music video director from Chao Wei Films, Huang Jin Xiang, as well as uh, the animator uh, who represents Finding Pictures, Gerald Chong, with us. We continue to talk to them on the Big Show TV. Meantime, um, we Let's have. Oh, song. wow! Let's play the song. Let's play the song. Let's Let's play play the song. song. <laughs> tell me these I things sometimes. I need to turn my head sometimes. And, and wow, Sean has put in the song right now. So let's play you this song. It's this year's NDP theme song. This is The Road Ahead on The Big Show, 1FM 91.3. Okay, the, we'll the, let the radio the, listeners the, the screen listen. Is, the screen is on my left, so, you know, I have to turn my head like that to see, you know, which song is coming up next. <laughs> it's very hard to get a word He in just slotted so. that song in at the last moment. And, 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 and uh, JX also just sent us a message saying that we have to give credit to Gerald because he's also the co-director oh. of the oh, music wow. video. Uh, so, well done to the both of you. Um, Linning, we heard from you, like, your inspiration behind uh, writing the theme song, which is not an easy task. Mm. Uh, thinking of all those songs that came before before you did this one, but Ching Chang, uh, just a question: um, any uh, any anecdotes or f funny stories you can share from behind the scenes of uh, filming the music video? There must have been some. <laughs> oh, that, definitely. I think um, we because we wanted to capture this sense of light, uh, very subtly through the song. That's why we always shoot. We only, we only shoot either very early in the morning, so we're talking like waking up uh, like four a.m. And we would shoot until like 7.30 a.m. <laughs> hmm. And then we would take a break and then we would shoot at 5 p.m. to um, like 7.30 p.m. So very short hours, very intense. Um, just to capture the, the best light uh, in Singapore across the 20 different locations we have. And there was one moment, I think when we went to Katip, right, to shoot the MRT track. And, and we were there and it was cloudy and it was about to rain. 
And my director of photography just kept looking at, at Jared and I because we were very worried, right? Oh my goodness, <laughs> yeah. I have to come back and shoot again, another day of shoot, you know, my producer's gonna kill me, I've already stretched the budget. And then he looks at me and says, Jets, why are you so stressed? Just have faith, right? Just have faith. So we were waiting there for three hours and then we got our shot. So that shot you see in the music video is uh, three of us. Three hours of us Pray. just waiting <laughs> up in the sky, hoping for the sun to come out, and it did. And it did. Wow, wow. that's that's uh, professionalism. Right there, professionalism, maybe. well done. And, and and that's not the only time of like waiting for the sun, the weather. I think on the day when we were shooting at Clark Key with the uh, Singapore River as well, there's this super almost like sublime magical moment where. Um, you know, earlier in the day, it was kind of cloudy. Uh, it wasn't raining, but it wasn't the best uh, sun that you could get. But towards the end of the shoot, like um, the sun just glowed behind the buildings. It was mm. not planned. And if you look at the video, there's one, one specific shot that at that moment, I think everyone in the crew, the team was like, yeah, we got it. Like, did you, this shed, is a, the did you shed a tear? It's, it's been inside. inside. It's inside. I think we're all sweating. No more tears. <laughs> <laughs> you see, people um, often overlook, you know, the, oh, the, the hard work, work yes. that, that goes into uh, yeah. making a music video, especially yeah. with, if you're talking about, you know, outdoor shoots and. It's and, crazy and all because that. you got to depend on Mother Nature <laughs> to give you what you want, right? And you say dawn and dusk are the best sort of golden hours to to mm. film with yeah. the best light and all that, yeah. and then it rains. And, and right? I mean, certain <laughs> times during the year as well i mean which months uh, did, did, did you guys do the filming so we we shot it i think uh end feb early march okay because we needed to give time for the animation and in order to i think kind of blend it in we we actually spent a lot of time planning so every, every shot we did was pre-planned mm. uh, so the animation would know exactly how they would come in so we could, we could work concurrently on on that as well okay how big was the crew mm. to do this all in singers and everybody else. every everyone in i mean i singers i'm not very sure the entirety of the music production so i'll let leaning answer that part um but i think for the crew i think we have including all the extras that we've had um we always kept to the COVID regulations yeah. Just yeah. 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 Some angry Singaporeans yeah. but um we, we we had about i think close to 60 to 70 people working 60 on this. to 70 wow. yeah mm. yeah huge but that i'm sure made it even even harder, harder. Yeah. yeah you know Manage people. yeah Oh, actually, it was very fun. It was very fun because we, we called a lot of our friends on the set. <laughs> and we, we tried to make it a fun environment for everybody to, to shoot. And it, it just went by in a flash, you know. Mm. Right, right. How did you come yeah, up, really uh, JX, with the, with the whole concept for the music video? So I think when Jared and I were listening to the music and our leaning song is so heartfelt, I think when you do music videos, you always want to listen to it and, and see what it's about, right? And to dig a little bit deeper. And, and so we, we, this notion of a perspective, because it was so personal to Lining that she was sharing, and we wanted to capture the sense that she was sharing her perspective with the rest of Singapore and inspiring people. And that's why we have the scene where she brings up the transparency, which kicks it off, right? That's the spark that kicks it, kicks it off. Mm. And we go through these four different uh, singers and we try to adapt it so that each of them had their own like, niche of, of what they were trying to encompass, you know, like... Mm. Leaning was the sense of community, right? When you see this uh, cartoon, 2D animated drawings, uh, beautifully done by Gerald and his team. And then obviously, Cesare, you get a sense of time, right? Time, the past, and how it connects to the present. This sense that we are going through these cycles, but we're going forward. <laughs> uh, when we went on to Shy, it was really about the kindness, the kindness and, and the spirit that, that, that the young have inherited. And that's why you see all these people in this garden that's like mm. going around here. We try to a, a, a apply a more contemporary approach. Um, and of course, Shabir, even though there's no animation, I think that's a segment that uh, Jared and I really, really like um, because it is about the quiet acts or quiet acts of courage to continue on our day to day living. Right. Uh, in Singapore by the everyday person. You right. see, these are the kind of stories that people don't know. They don't the know, connection yeah. of the and, music and video. And because this is on the big show TV, mm. people can watch it over and over again. Yes. Yeah. They watch the music video and they, they, they hear your explanation mm. of, of how the video came about. And, and you mentioned Shabir. Now, did Shabir uh, uh, help in the music production? Because, I mean, that's his uh, area of specialty yeah. as well. 
Yeah, no, this time he came on board just as a singer. Oh, and, wow. Okay. He was such a dream to work with. And, you know, you could hear him rehearsing his warm-ups yeah. and that stuff. He's such a pro, awesome. right? <laughs> you know? And, uh, of course, I mean, we were we were so, uh, um, uh, you know, glad to see uh, Cesare there as well. Yes. But you were talking about, uh, there's another singer, Shy. Is that Shy, her name? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, I've never I, I, I'm, seen not, or I'm not heard so her, familiar yeah. with her. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about her? Yeah, for sure. So Shai has been just making waves for the last couple of years. Okay. Um, she has a very passionate Instagram following. And um, <laughs> like, I love just what she represents, you know. She comes in and like, she just has no airs about her. You know, she's still in school. So okay. uh, her mom is sort of her momager. Mm, momager. Uh, and uh, <laughs> so the both of them come in and then they're discussing like school schedules. And um, she was at first really unsure of herself and... Um, like she's quite tall and she looks very put together so you wouldn't think it when you first meet her but i guess after we dug deeper into the song she later admitted that you know she wasn't sure if she felt worthy of it and uh, it felt so heartening to see that side of um someone young you know right it reminded me of myself and you know how how all these situations i used to be in and like feeling unsure and like that lack of confidence but to me and to all the people around her we just thought you know your talent is undeniable and you shouldn't feel that way at all so um it was a very exciting and enlightening experience yeah i'm sure she'll get more confident with every day that goes by absolutely yeah. Yeah, i think so okay we're gonna take a, a short break and uh, um give well, everyone yeah. a traffic update and then we'll come back okay, okay. um here we go stand by One FM ninety one point three traffic. There's just one area to look out for, and that's the SLE towards the CTE. A vehicle broken down after Woodlands Avenue two exit. Just stay within the speed limit, please. Make sure you've got everyone in your car buckled up. Be safe as you drive today. Good morning, Singapore. We have a very special edition of the Big Show this morning. That's because we have our ND peeps, <laughs> <Andy> peeps. <laughs> on the show. We have Lindy Ying, who composed this year's theme song, The Road Ahead. We have the music video director, who represents Zhao Wei Films, Huang Jin Xiang, as well as the animator for the music video uh, and co-director of uh, this year's uh, National Day theme song as well, who represents Finding Pictures, Gerald Chong. Uh, once again, thank you so much, guys, for being on the show and we are so excited about this year's National Day Parade. Yeah. I, ju- I just want to say thank you for giving me goosebumps again. <laughs> I've waited a long time. And if you waited haven't already time. seen the video, uh, you can always go to ND Peeps on Instagram where the, mm-hmm. where the video is up. It's a great video. Really well done, guys. I mean, to Lin Ying, I thought you were absolutely fabulous. Super. Uh, thanks for explaining to us. Uh, just just one, a couple of words from you as to what you hope the audience is going to take away from this song that you composed? Um, so I really, I think my biggest hope for people listening to the song is, um, it might be best to explain this through highlighting one of my, what I think is one of my most important lines. Uh, it's a short line, but it's from, it's from Shy's segment and it's, it's the line, the home we share. Um, you know, I think people pay more attention to the chorus, but I really want the, that line to kind of resonate with people because I I feel like it's so important right now that we remember our humanity and you know the country being made up of just our family and friends and just human beings in general I think we can't ever hope to get through this without remembering that and without treating people with the respect and kindness that you know we all deserve And um, yeah, I think that's the main takeaway I want people to get from the song. Oh my goodness, she's making me choke up. (laughs) (laughs) The home we share. We should speak as emotional as the song itself. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like carrying the Singapore flag. I know, it's like I need need to wear red and white. (laughs) Which is is why I said early on that I'm looking forward to this year's National Day Parade. You know, uh, uh, apart from the fact that, I mean, we are having a National Day Parade, you know, despite uh, Mm. the difficult times that we're Mm. living in. Mm. uh, And the fact that we are still being so uh, uh, optimistic about the future, Mm. uh, doing all we can to get things back to normal. The road ahead, you mean? Uh, The road ahead, (laughs) absolutely, absolutely. And and the the reason I'm looking forward to it as well is because, you know, we all want to see everyone get involved when this song plays. For sure. You know, at at the National Day Parade. For sure. Very true, very true. 
I also want to really quickly give a shout out to Evan Lowe, who uh, co-composed and produced the song with me. And he really added this layer of like soaring production to it that I really think, you know, with just a song alone, without that kind of musical background to it, I don't think it would have given you the goosebumps. <laughs> right, right. What, what, what was your first reaction when, uh, you know, these guys revealed the music video to you? And you watched oh, it for the very first time. You know, because filming is pretty, it was pretty stressful and tiring. And I was sweating and being um, just nervous the whole time. But when I saw the video, I was so, I got, I got chills too. Did and you cry? Oh, I didn't, but I was very close to it. <laughs> in the part where, the, where, the, where that plant grew, grew and then it turned into the, the walk crying scene. Like food is very emotional for me. <laughs> that was, oh, Everyone. that was so good. Fantastic. Excellent. And and what was the feeling uh, um, you got, uh, Chin Siang, when, when it was all done? Oh, I mean, you know, to, it's such an incremental process, right? When you see the animations, you see it as line drawings. And, um, you know, I really appreciate it that, that also Gerald takes such a big part in the live action or constantly giving feedback. And so when it's really done, I just felt really, really proud of everybody who gave so much to just making the whole point whole whole video come to life um when you think of the number of hours they pull um just to animate it and just to get it done you know i was always heartened um at one point i was wondering like oh thank goodness we got a deadline because gerald keeps wanting to <laughs> change the frame to to get even better and better um but there's this sense of perfection that that i think was was very meaningful so when, when it was finally done we were a bit nervous of the reception as well uh, we did think we had something pretty special, so to, to have people respond to it in this way, to, to Linning and Evan's uh, beautiful song, I mean, we were just uh, overjoyed, yeah. Right. And, <laughs> and, and, and what was your feeling, Gerald, that night when everything was complete, uh? lying down in bed, looking up at the <laughs> ceiling, and still thinking about this music video? And how you can make it better as well, right? All the time, right? I don't right? know. <laughs> what, what were you thinking? What, were you, what, what, what was yeah. going through your I mean, mind? Uh, a lot, a lot of credit goes to the team at Finding Pictures. I think uh, just like how you know the singers had four different people bringing their personalities. Essentially, it was kind of like producing kind of five different short films because one you have the line drawings and then you move on to color pencil. So each um, um, segment had a specific artist that lent their style, their um, you know personal touch to it. Um, the painting, uh, painted sequence, um, you have uh, Mark V who's animating all these um, beautiful kind of camera transitions which is not uh, easy at all. But at the same time, it's not um, just him, there is a painter called Jack and a few other uh, painters who came in to paint over um, all these uh, animated um, drawings. So um, I think at the, at the end of it all, it really is, um, you know, people, a, a wide variety of people with different talents and all coming together to really give this sense of um, diversity, a lot of personality and individuality. And then when it all comes together, it really kind of, I mean, we hope that it represented the Singapore spirit in some way. It yeah. has. Oh, you it did. Definitely, definitely did. Definitely did. It certainly has, guys. Definitely. Really. And then and the last day, I guess, um, I think there's a sense of like nervousness because in animation, you can always tweak it to, to the end. Um, but at some point, I think that's when, uh, you know, you, you put it out to the world and uh, see how people connect with the images. And I think it's really, um, we're really glad that uh, it has been um, received positively. It's oh, a really, really brilliant. great job. It's well done, guys. Job, very, very Big nice. Big round of applause for yeah. all of you and all the 60 or 70 people that were involved as well. Yeah, you know, and thank you very much for being on, on the show this morning. When we heard we had the opportunity to speak to you guys, we jumped at it, Yeah. you know, and uh, thank, thank you, you so much. And Thanks. I, and I just want to uh, once again shout out to, um, in terms of uh, the performers at this year's, uh, mm -hmm. uh, on, on this um, uh, song, The Road Ahead, uh, uh, Lin Ying and of course, there's Shai and uh, Cesari and Shabir. Shabir. Yeah. Yeah. If you guys are watching, well done. <laughs> awesome. Good morning. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Fabulous job. Fabulous well done, job. guys. Well done. Thank you so much, Jin Xiang. Thank you, Lin Ying. And thank you, Gerald, for being with thank us you. this morning. It's been a real pleasure. And we wish you guys all the very best. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you very much. much. Have a great right. week. Happy National Day in Happy advance. National Day. <laughs> one, one. Happy National Day in advance, yes. <laughs> yeah. See bye you guys. guys. Bye, guys. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. Okay, thank you. See you. All right, here's uh, Genesis, The Invisible Touch on The Big Show, 1FM 91.3. 
Okay. Uh, wow. Are we Johan or no, uh, no, no, do, Jen, we, do no, we have um, the book review? Why not? Yeah, I mean, if, if Anjali yeah. has a book, do you have? Do you have? Anjali she always has. Anjali one. always has a book. <laughs> front and center. <laughs> oh, that front and center. Okay. Very I nice. Oh my god. Good. Okay, so today's book is called Wonder. It's such a cute cover. Yeah, yeah. it is, right? Um, and it's by this uh, lady named R.J. Pal- Palacio. I think that's how Can I have a look at the cover again? Palacio. Palacio. Sure, here you go. Oh, that's FD, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I want to see FD. He's, I knew it, no? Yes. I knew it just because it's white, no? It's white with just one eye. With one, white. one eye. Why do you have one eye? No, not because it's white. Because it's the ears, la. <laughs> 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 okay, so this book uh, it follows this boy called August. Um, he's uh, I think he's ten or eleven. I watched this movie. Yeah, yeah, I watched it. We Which was it? Oh, yeah, oh. Okay, and it's about and he has this thing called Treacher Collins syndrome, yes. which is a, a, a genetic disorder characterized by some deformities to the face. Mm. I have no. So this movie, movie was actually starring uh, Julia Roberts and Owen Wilson. Yes. And uh, I think the child actor was Jacob Tremblay. He's like the yeah. choice child actor. Oh for my god, the makeup like, right was so was, good. I yeah. thought I thought he really had they 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 had cast uh, an, no, an actor not, yeah. with, with that syndrome, syndrome. You know. Right. Yeah. yeah I don't so know this movie. I, <laughs> you have to watch it. It's, it's so called good. Wonder. It's called yeah, Wonder. I was cr- I cried at the end of that movie. I, I cried as well. Yeah. I cried at the end of this book as well because it, it's like it, it follows the boy as he goes through like starting school for the first time because he had been homeschooled uh, for for his whole life and uh, you know some of the bullying that he goes through made me so upset and it made me cry for mm. him and I like how this book um, also goes into the perspectives of the siblings and the parents and his friends so every like couple I think every 30 or 40 pages it changes perspective to different people in his life so right, it's not okay. just about him and it's very real world exactly you know that this that this kind of disorder follows every single person in his life and it's not just about him yeah. mm. you know, usually the book of, is much better than the movie so I can uh, just so imagine I do Which think is the, book, it? the book is it better? made me cry it made me so angry it made me oh, frustrated oh the book cry- made you cry both made me cry oh wow but to be honest I cry at everything yeah that's but you know the, <laughs> the, 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 sounds like me hey stop uh, it same, same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I I just loved it I loved it so okay, much okay I need to watch this movie how am I hearing f- this for the first time I watched it on HBO 2017 yeah. I the, have not heard of it have in the movie it's okay you're not alone. Have you? You I haven't seen it. Either. In the movie, he has a, an astronaut helmet, right? Does he have one in the book as well? Yeah, so they, they, did, they did mention that while he was seven to eight years old, he used to wear astronaut helmets mm. because he was afraid of showing his face. Oh, yeah. oh wow. Oh, I want to oh, cry man. already. <laughs> so I cute. I need an no, he's, he's so cute. He's so adorable. No, oh, okay. I'm going to go watch that <laughs> over the weekend. Okay, yeah. wonder. Okay. Book yeah. review. Done, done. Done. <laughs> All right. If you missed that book review, you can always head to our Facebook page. Uh, you can find uh, Anjali is going to post it up and you can read that over the weekend. Yeah. And the wonderful thing here is that, you know, if you don't like reading, can watch the movie there yeah, you go. Yeah, That's yeah. What I like to I, I'm gonna watch the movie <laughs> <laughs> or you can watch the movie and just pretend you read the book yeah yeah no I read the book because I got the best book review <laughs> flip through the book while the movie is going yeah. on just like oh, oh, oh there it is yeah, I read it, I read it. it's like an audio book <laughs> alright <laughs> okay what a morning this has been yeah. you know I really really enjoyed uh, our conversation with Nicola yes. because you know how much I love wine yes. so I'm very excited to True. try uh, organic and biodynamic Bi- and now wine. you'll know so much more, right? I'm going to the shop today to ask them. If <laughs> you're, they like, have... you're like, which stars and moon was this under? No, I, 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 just, yeah. I just want to walk into a wine shop now and just seem so knowledgeable. Um, could you tell me which of your wines is biodynamic? biodynamic. Yeah. <laughs> then they'll ask you why, how you know about these kind of things, and you say, oh, I know about the stars' influence on it. Yeah, and you're like, yeah. all I have is when I drink the wine, yeah. I, see I see stars. stars. <laughs> Sean, <laughs> yes. I, I will go even further and say because you know, have you heard of Robert Parker? Does I'm, have good, a green I'm good friends with Robert Parker. <laughs> yeah, Close go. enough. Close I got enough. an emblem. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I also know Nicola. <laughs> there and you go. He gave me a green sticker. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, our NDP, ND peeps, peeps. ND ND peeps. peeps. Yeah, yes. really good. Uh, I did not know so they were carrying on with the uh, National Day Parade this year. Yeah, they are. Yeah, the yeah. floating platform. Oh, floating fantastic. Platform. Like full out parade. F- is it full on or? Uh, I mean, okay, don't ask me this up okay. question. No, I think. I think no, but it's full enough. Enough, full yeah, on enough. They have. I, I. I don't quote me on this, but I think I heard somewhere that 
It, they, they, they're doing it But it's less than Half the normal Capacity size. Yes. Oh, okay, yeah. Right yes, okay. We are having it yeah. And I know I saw having. someone Already put up the fly pass So the, the yeah. rehearsals Are already going already on going, yeah. So every Saturday You can expect to see right. The the fly, Air, fly Airplanes pass. are socially distant So no problem yeah, No that's okay yeah, Alright yeah, okay yeah. <laughs> The pilots are safe okay. <laughs> Every week you hear Planes <laughs> in Singapore But it's that's it's true. It's so um, significant It, it is, is It is It is For us Personally I think A National Day Parade this year is more important than ever. Than yeah, ever. yeah, it's meaningful. Sure. It's I mean, really I mean, meaningful. it just shows that everything is starting to open up. Things is going to yeah. start yeah. getting back to yeah. normal, and uh, and that target, you know, yeah. um, the vaccination yeah. target as well. National day, right? On national yeah. day, we yeah. hope to get two thirds yeah. of uh, the population yeah. vaccinated. So, um, so good yeah. stuff. All good right. Stuff. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, we say goodbye to you. Yes. All right. Uh, share the video, please. please. See you tomorrow. Bye.